let me tell you why I hate BMI. Let's talk about why I hate BMI. As a fitness professional, I don't like it. I understand it's widely used to assess body weight relative to height, but here's the problem. It fails to take into consideration muscle mass, bone density, overall body composition, what's your race, what's your sex. All of these things are gonna have an impact on your height to weight ratio. And I think there are some far better measurements of health and wellness out there. And let's talk about those real quick. So let's talk about some of those better indicators of health and wellness and tests that we can run. The first one for me, and probably the one that I think holds the most weight is gonna be your body fat percentage. Now I get it, it's still a ratio, but it's not a body weight to height ratio. This is a body fat to total weight ratio. So now we're gonna start taking some of those things into consideration. What's our bone density? What's our muscle mass as compared to what our body fat is? The higher our body fat, just like anything else, that's gonna be an indicator of us susceptible to some more of those chronic diseases. Diabetes, cancer, heart disease, those kinds of things that kill more people in this country than anything else. This is a fantastic way and it's a relatively inexpensive way to measure our health and wellness. Your modern bathroom scale probably has some kind of body fat measuring device built into it. So it's really quite that simple. If you don't have one of those, stop in. in. I'd, I'd be happy to do a, a skin fold test on you. Uh, we can put you on one of those electronic machines to do that. Or if you want to go get a DEXA scan, that's going to be the most accurate measure of body fat. By all means, there's places in almost every major metropolitan area that will do those things for you. 40, 50 bucks, somewhere around there. You can get a DEXA scan. Another way, thing that we can take a look at is our waist circumference. Waist circumference, circumference is going to be a good indicator of our health and wellness, particularly when it comes to preventing those chronic health diseases that we just talked about. So for males, ideally anything over a 40 inch waist, we are at an increased risk of coronary heart disease, of cancers, and of type two diabetes. Ladies, we wanna keep yours at 35 or less. Your cardiorespiratory conditioning is another great indicator of your health and wellness. And all this is, is a measure of how long you can do sustained workouts. The better your cardiorespiratory system is working, the lower risk of those chronic health diseases you're gonna have. And then this one's a little bit more expensive, but it's a fantastic indicator. And this is going to take a look at your blood markers. If you're going in for your annual physical, you should be doing this anyway. But these kinds of things, we're gonna take a look at your blood sugar. We're gonna take a look at your hormone levels. You're gonna take a look at how your body's handling, handling inflammation and those inflammation markers. All of those things are gonna give us a much more complete profile about our health and wellness and also give us some indications of do we have some of those chronic health problems on the horizon and now we can start taking proper steps to reduce the risk of getting those or even possibly eliminating them from our future. And really that's what health and wellness is all about. That's what this gym is all about. We wanna reduce your risk of getting those chronic health diseases that I just mentioned kill more people in this country than anything else. So whether it's BMI, whether it's body fat, whether it's your waist circumference, cardiorespiratory, blood markers, whatever it is that we're doing to indicate your health and wellness, we need to have some tips in order to make sure that we're achieving that, correct? And that's what we're gonna talk about right now. I wanna give you a couple of tips on how you can bring those numbers into those ideal ranges. Now these tips are gonna help you to reduce your BMI, your body fat, increase your cardiorespiratory uh, tolerances. It's gonna help with your blood markers. It's gonna reduce your, your weight ratio. So as always, and if you've watched any of my videos before, we've already talked about this balanced diet, guys. That's number one. You gotta eat your fruits and vegetables. You gotta eat your lean proteins. You gotta eat your good sources of fats. You gotta balance all that stuff out. That's what's going to help us reduce all of those numbers and put them in those ideal ranges. I don't care who you are. That's what we need to do. Stop eating crap food. Reduce those sugars. Reduce those processed foods. Hell, I say eliminate those processed foods from your diet. Those are the things that are killing us. If it wasn't a food prior to 1900, don't eat it. It really comes down to that. It's that simple. The industrialized process of our food is what is killing Americans and it's, it's going all over the world. That's why we have an obesity problem. Number two, portion control. And I struggle big time with portion control. So I understand for those of you that have that problem, I get it. I really do. We got to understand how much of that food we're putting in our body. Doesn't matter if it's good food for us or not. If we're putting too much in, if we're putting more in than we're sending out, 
we're not going to achieve our goals. We're going to increase that waistline. We're going to increase that body fat percentage. That's not what we want to do. So portion control. Real simple thing, guys. Palm of your hand is going to be a serving size of lean protein. I don't care what kind it is. Fistful of grains. Cupped hand, or I'm sorry, cupped handful of grains, fistful of fruits and vegetables. That's all one serving size. So now that you know that, we can start applying that to our nutrition programs. How about regular exercise? We've talked about this before. I just did a video a couple weeks ago about this, right? How much exercise do we need in a given week as adults? We need 150 minutes of moderately paced exercise to achieve those health markers that we're looking for. 150 minutes, that's not that much. 30 minutes a day, five days a week, you got it, right? Or if we want to exercise vigorously, 75 minutes a week. So that's three sessions a week. That's all we got to do. And we can achieve those kind of things. And I, I got to mention this. Um, a lot of this goes out to my ladies, but guys, it's just as important for you. If you are not strength training, if you are not lifting weights, you're doing yourself and your family a disservice. You have to lift weights. Cardio alone is not going to do it. We got to get in here. We got to pick things up and we got to put them down. It's going to help with your muscle mass. It's going to help with your hormone control and it's going to help with your bone density. And that's where my ladies come into play here. If you're not strength training, you are increasing your risk of osteoporosis. Number four, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. If we're eating our fruits and vegetables, we're getting some hydration that way. But it can't be just plain old water. You got to make sure you're getting your magnesium, your potassium and your sodium in there as well. That's those electrolytes. That's what's helped pushing that, that water into our bloodstream. And that's what's going to help keep us healthy. Some other benefits to, to water. It's going to help us sleep better. It's going to help us regulate our hormone levels. It's going to help us burn fat. There's a little key there that everybody wants to not talk about. Being properly hydrated is going to help us reduce our body fat percentage. That's what we want. It's going to help reduce that waistline. That's what we want. It's going to help us perform better so we can increase our cardiorespiratory tolerances. Water is super important, but it's got to have those electrolytes in it as well. So make sure you're getting hydrated. Number five, sleep quality. You got to get on a sleep schedule. Your circadian rhythm is extremely important. Shut those blue lights off. Shut that TV off at night. Eliminate all those white lights that are coming underneath the door. Put your phone in a drawer if you have to have it in the room, but you need to get quality sleep. This is where recovery takes place. All that stuff that we've done to break down our bodies, we need to recover. In order to make that happen, we got to get proper sleep combined with that nutrition. Don't forget about that part. Number six, reduce our stress level. I know this is easier said than done, but it's one of those things that we really, really got to start working on. We got to start reducing our stress levels. How do we do that? I don't know. I, I can't tell you how to do it. I can give you some suggestions though. We've talked about those in a previous video as well. Find some, some quality and some constructive processes in order to deal with stress, all right? What do I mean by that? I'm not talking about alcohol. I'm not talking about pills. I'm talking about meditation. Maybe it's yoga. I, whatever it is that works for you, reading a book, taking a bath, all of the, anything that we can do to help reduce our stress level, those are the kinds of things we want to implement into our daily routine. And then number seven, and this is really, really important, guys, you got to set realistic goals. We are a big proponent around here of the SMART acronym. Your goals need to be specific, they need to be measurable, they need to be obtainable, they need to be relatable, and they need to be timely. Make sure those things are happening. Set realistic goals. Get with somebody to help hold you accountable to those goals. That's what's going to help us reduce that waistline. That's what's going to help us reduce that body fat. In turn, your BMI is probably going to come down a little bit too. Increase our cardiorespiratory tolerances and make sure our blood markers are where they're supposed to be. If you want some more tips like this, don't forget to give us a follow. We'll talk to you later. Have a great day.